Oh my goodness. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. It is, mm, looks cold outside. That's all I got to say. I have a nice, beautiful window over here. I like to always just gaze out and see what's happening in this beautiful world. There's a person walking. I like that. I like when people are up, up at 8.30 8 a.m. walking around. Ooh, I got some Splatoon shirts on. That's cool. Splatoon. Fit me a little bit better, I think, when I first got it. Mooch hanging out all day. Oh, you know, Luce. Coffee ready in the Zojirushi all morning. Mod Luce with us today. Boom. I, now, I'm rocking old school, not chess.com mug, you know, but old school Tonks coffee mug. This is old school. Hey, Jess Opas, how's it going? Hey, Sopas, Jess Opas, eh, one or the other. This is my old Tonks coffee cup. You could only get this when you subscribe to Tonks Coffee, which got acquired by Blue Bottle Coffee, which is now what I'm drinking in my Zojirushi. Everyone should own a Zojirushi. It helps their lives. So hopefully we got music going. Hopefully auto is working. Let me know if that's not working. If you don't hear music, don't hear audio, let me know. So let's start off the morning like we do every live stream. Pouring it up. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Naming of a monkey is all in itself. If you think about it, every single mono is super unique. It's like a it's like a it's like a snowflake. And uh, the name really comes out in its personality, to be honest with you. Now, Mooch itself, her name is Mooch because Mooch is the original Mooch, however, of Tybini babies. However, other monkeys all have unique names. Um, that are not necessarily the but the actual Thai Beanie Baby. Even though Mooch doesn't really look like a Thai Beanie Baby, to be honest with you, because she's rocking the Evolve shirt. She's, like, pretty sweet. That was pretty cool. Mm. I literally just made this coffee, so woke up, shower, coffee, code. That's what I like to do. Now, today, I decided that I'm going to do something new. I've wanted to explore technology for a long time. It's called Signal R. Uh, for real-time communication uh, and usually you need web sockets, but it's kind of that abstraction layer on top of it. So I get questions all the time about web sockets, about Signal R. Does it work with Xamarin? Does it, like, how does it work? I don't know. I have no idea, like to be honest with you. Like when I think about it and I'm like, I don't know about that Signal R. Like how does any of that work? It's just like how I feel about Docker. I don't know anything about Docker. I don't know the difference between an image and a container. I don't know when I use a Docker file or when I use a Compose file. I mean, when people ask me about that stuff, to be honest. This is enough to scare me to go update my LinkedIn profile and look for another job. Yeah, that's basically how I feel. Um, so so I'm going to do Signal R Saturdays. Now, this will be the first one. And of course, I'm out of town next week. We all know because you all follow me intensely and deeply and follow my stream schedule below. Um, which I've now updated with some information. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so, so you can follow that below, you know, and just make sure that you you creep around, follow where I'm going to be at, you know. Shia LaBeouf, just like Shia LaBeouf. So, uh, this is going to be a series where I explore web and mobile integration. So I did take a look last night, sneak peek action into whether things will work. And according to the Wikipedia pages and to the stack overflows and the NuGets, everything should work. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna to try to build out a, a backend probably today, integrate some mobile apps, try to get crazy with it, build a real application and uh, hopefully make it interactive. So uh, I'm, I'm like, I literally know nothing case of pass about it at all, to be honest with you, nothing. Literally, like I'm literally going to go into Visual Studio like I always do. And I'm going to do what all Visual Studio developers do. I'm going to start right clicking on everything. I mean, that's my plan is just to start right clicking on everything. I don't I don't know anything. So if anyone knows SignalR, this would be a good learning experience. You can point out flaws or things that I'm I'm doing wrong. But literally, it's going to be like from scratch. Like, hey, can we do this? Is it going to be a thing that is possible um, just in general? Because I don't know who. There we go. There we go. Looks sounds cool. <sighs> what should I do today? Okay, so let's kick it off and let's head over to my 
computer, I think. Let's do that. Oh, my computer's not... Oh, there it is. It's like, oh, my computer's not there. Oh, my goodness. So, I wonder what I need. I wanted to use the previews. 15-9 previews. Ooh, Mike James. The Mike James. The Mike James. How'd it go with Mike James? I think I need this, this load right here. .NET Core... 2.1 web development. I think I need to install this. Let's download that. Download the internet. So while this is downloading, like I could just use the normal community edition too, but this should download relatively quick. I um, had a pretty good stream yesterday, and as you have already noticed, this happened last night. And, and like how I said productive, productive evening. Super productive. I just am noticing that now. So I'm feeling pretty great about it um and yeah so far we will we'll, you know get that and people are like oh man you know people ask me all the time like why do you like visual studio well you know but unlike chris i'm not a command line guy i love that warm fuzzy feeling of my ide i do love that warm fuzzy feeling yeah mike james is pretty great um in general so mike i worked with mike for many years at xamarin and now he's back on the cda team which is pretty fantastical so i'm really excited about that uh, and immediately I, I, I reached out to him uh, and I was like, hey man, what's up? Like, what's going on? Let's twitter.com slash Mike codes.net. See, like, I just type in Mike and it's right there. This is the uh, the Mike James. Whoop, there's loose. Right there. Boop. Look at that. That's cool. Oh, it was yesterday at the Xamarin Expert Day. How'd that go? Let's go, let's creep on Mike here. Let's see what Mike's doing. Creeping on Mike James. You can see he's, he's real into it. That's good. I think he always wanted to get into live streaming. He should probably... I'll reach out to him and see what he's up to over there in that world. He was doing a lot of YouTube videos and whatnot, but... Yeah, Mike is great. He's a good dude. Good dude. Oh, Jim was there too? The Jim? I wrote, I wrote a whole chapter, aka one page introduction to his book, which is pretty cool. So now you can learn about things that people want to do. So um, let's go to Signal R Core. I think it's called, I think that's what it's called. I'm calling it, yeah, ASP.NET Core Signal R, Core Signal. Signals, the, the R's, the cores, signals, R signals, cores. So. I'm pretty sure that there's two two bits and pieces of it. You got the server component, so the server's listening, and then clients can communicate. It's kind of like WebSocket real-time communication. So all I really want to do is uh, have some server that's sitting there listening that the client can connect to. Maybe it's just a command line. I don't know. Uh, that's just sitting there going back and forth, and I can just be like pop, 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 right? And, and who knows um, in general. So let's, uh, when's this getting started? I think that's this. Oh, that's interesting. This is Signal Art Story. So we're going to try to build this out ASP.NET and Web Development SDK. I wonder if I have that installed. Hmm. I want the core one, though. Hmm. So ASP.NET Core. We're going to, all I did was install, I'll show you my Visual Studio preview. Hey, Weezy, good morning. Golang WebSockets. Not a Golang person. Hmm. It's no Microsoft shenanigans. Well, so Signal R, from a high level of what I explained, so by the way, so Signal R, I was listening to Fritz talk about it. Because I thought it was some proprietary shenanigans. Um, and I didn't I didn't know, right? I don't I don't I don't know too much about WebSockets in general, just in general, I'm not like, that's, that's not what I do. So my um, actual um, understanding of SignalR is that SignalR gives you this server client, um, basically package abstraction over common protocols. So while today there's WebSockets, which is what it's using, I'm pretty sure, under the hood to make these connections, 
the idea is if some new hot technology comes out, ASP.NET Core Signal R can update, and then boom, right, and then done. So, Gorilla WebSockets? Yeah, so, yeah, there's like, there's like, you know, .NET so WebSockets too, we could use WebSockets too, but yeah, we're exploring it together, so. Mm, let's see if I go into the introduction we can see here. Yeah, it's open source. It creates this uh, back and forth. Yeah, see it's abstraction. And it supports several technologies like WebSockets. There you go. Server sent events, long polling, chooses the best transportation method. Yes, I want that, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I should probably do one just on WebSockets, WebSocket Wednesday. Every, everything needs to match and it needs to be uh, needs to be like that website Wednesday so I'm in preview so I'm assuming that I think I need that I think do I need and this do I need both of these done core I think I need this one how big is that one 58 megabytes how much is this one a jig hmm do that so the hub to use this hubs to communicate between client and server high-level pipeline blah, blah, blah. okay so let's see what this this thing does create a web project web app as signal our client whoa what is that client side library oh I've never seen this hmm yeah, I was looking on NuGet, and I was looking at Signal R. There it is, Signal R client. Pretty sure that's it. Yep, yep, yep. And then this is like a no, that's not it. Signal R core. Core. Web API core. This one. I was just looking at it. ASP dot signal R core NuGet. Yeah, there it is. Obviously, it's the signal R core with no with no logo, because it's just a .NET standard library. No, wait, is that it? No. Oh. I'm way hmm. up. I feel blessed. Hey, RD, thanks for the uh, follow. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. There we go. Signal R core dependencies found it. Perfect. This is what I wanted to do. So this 1.04 published nine days ago, 19 days ago. That's pretty good. So not too bad. Uh, all right, we're finishing up. We're installing stuff, and we are going to build stuff. Let's put this tab away. Don't need that. Mm -mm 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 I wonder if I just run it locally. That's my plan too, is just do it all locally first. So there's signal R core, and then there's source code. Let's go to the source code. Wow, 5,000 downloads a day must be relatively popular. People like the sockets of web and signals. Uh-huh. Build passing, it's on Travis CI for some reason. Mm -hmm. Core. My only fear is I've always seen that it's like, says core and then I went here into the supported platforms this is me last night in bed so after I did my Donovan board where I was just like oh I feel super comfy what I'm doing over here um, we have a um, bunch of versions that are supported then client there's a .NET client and a Java client and then I was like googling around and like actually found that that it, it actually does work, correct? Mm -hmm. ASP NetCore Signal R dot core. I don't know what the difference is. Real time communication web. Like, why are these two things the same but different? Oh, I bet this relies on core. This makes sense. So many dependencies, so many packages. So many packages. It's like NPM, but. Oh, I need a all the packages button. Mm. All right, let's see. Oh, 
And, you know, I was in dark theme yesterday because bits were thrown my way from Mr. Ryan, our two top contender over there. So let's go back to Sanity. Oh, uh, yeah, here we go. Mm. <sighs> now, we're, now we're better. Now we're just all sorts of better in this world. So let's see. Let's put this stuff. Don't need this, 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 this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new GitHub repo. Or you know what? I think I have a um, Motsko's live one. I should just reuse that library. Um, probably easier to do. Let's see, github.com slash James. Let's see, mods, codes. There we go. I've used SignalR and Xamarin to build a chat application for the company I've worked for, says Null Pointer. <laughs> that's a funny, that's a funny handle. Um, but the problem for me was the connection alive when the app closes. Oh, yeah, so I'm assuming that this is gonna be exactly the same as, as I would expect, which is that nothing works once the app closes or goes into the background. On iOS, the thing dies. You, you can't have sockets, like that's impossible. On Android, I guess you could do, wow, look at all these things that I did. Uh, on Android, you could have a background service. Yeah, look at all these things I used to do. Wow, I used to be so organized. Holy bananas. Let's add a new folder. Signal Twitch. Our Saturdays. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to create a new ASP.NET app. Let's do this here. I guess I could do it in VS Code. Whoa. We're going to call this getting started web. There we go. Web app. Let's put this inside of... Uh, where did I just put this thing? Mots, repos, mots, codes. See? Users, source, repos. Wow, that is in a interesting location. It's very deep for some reason. But, uh, okay. Let's put it there. No new directory. We'll call this signal R chat. Okay. Mots coding live. So much coding. Um, okay, so we're going to create a new ASP.NET Core app. Mmm. Oh, you want me to create it in code? Okay. Let's see. Sure. Okay, let's see. I guess I'll install. I don't even know. I don't even know if I have anything installed. C sharp extension. Do I need that? I don't even know. What is how does that work? I don't use VS Code that much. Let's see. But I probably should. I probably should. Let's see. Mm. How do I get to a console? Uh, there's an update. I guess I'll install this update now that we've we've told it to do this. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think you need to figure out what you're using Signal R in WebSockets for in a mobile application. It should be really short bursts of communication, like a chat room or something like that, um, just in general. So, but yeah. We can we can vote. We can vote on VS or VS Code. I don't know. So, I mean, we have this thing here. 
let's see, this says I need a folder. So let's open a folder. Okay. Mm. I don't know why I put it here for some reason. Oh, because it's my name. I see. Select. Okay. And how do I get to a command line? Color theme. Ugh. Okay. Ah, oh, so much better. There we go. How do I, I get to a command? Control tick. Oh, okay. We're learning together. Thank you. Okay. We're in this folder. Everything looks great in a the light theme. Control tick is what we're doing here. I have Donnet Core, C Sharp for Visual Studio, code for the command line. Now, do I need PowerShell? I guess PowerShell. So I need to do dot net new web app o signal r client. I think that'll do it. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, I got some dot net core stuff. Mm hmm. Okay. .NET build. LS. Ah, see, it creates the directory. CD signal, our client, .NET run. I have no idea what it just gave me. Now I'm totally confused. But we can look in this folder. We got some bin, we got some obs, we got the program file. Hmm. Run. Pages. Ooh, razor pages. Downloading package. Downloading stuff. It's happening. Downloading .NET Core debug. Oh, that's cool. It's just like downloading stuff. Let's see what this needs me to do. Okay. The following command. Requires... You're missing debug. Do I want to add that? Uh, yes. Finished. All right, so we should go back to terminal. Oh, it started. Listening on this port. <laughs> deleted, deleted links are the best for the win. How do I click on that? Can I click on Okay, there we go. Whoa. Privacy. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, so we have a, uh, we have a website here. <laughs> Perfect. All right. That looks good. Let's go into our debugger. And how do I stop? There we go. Meg Mega asks, um, why are Visual Studio build times so long? Why does it feel like Xamarin's buggy sometimes? Any ideas? Well, it's a great question. Um, may I recommend you? We did, did this yesterday, by the way, and deleted links. So you can't put links in here. And on GitHub. So you should take a look at the work that we're doing and have done over the, the last few years. Uh, if you go to our wiki on Xamarin Android, I'll just link to this here. We have build time performance. You can go to right here. I can put links in here, boom. And this will show you all of the new enhancements that we're doing before and after um, in 15.8 and 15.9 of Visual Studio. Uh, in often scenarios, we have reduced all the build times by less than half or more than half down, uh, sometimes super fast. That's why I'm using the preview currently. And you can take a look here at all the different ones uh, and how they measure them. You can go through 
things like that. Now, if you have uh, you know questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter, or uh, you can email me too. Anyone can email me any other issues. Mots at Microsoft dot com. It's my email. All right, so we're in code because apparently we need to be in code. So let's install this Web Manager CLI, Microsoft Web Library CLI. That's what it tells me to do. You can invoke the tool using the command libman. It was installed. All right. So now what we're going to do is add the SignalR JavaScript file. So this is going to install ASP.NET Signal R pack into here. Mm, I don't know. All this feels archaic. I, I don't like. I don't like any. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like any of this. Let's go, let's use a real ID. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm switching back to, to Visual Studio already. <laughs> it's happening. Sorry, Luz. Sorry, Luz. It's happening. <laughs> I can't. I can't handle it. I have this big IDE community edition. It's free. It's all free. Why not use a real one? Or use a real thing. Use a real thing. I mean, I love VS Code. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just a Visual Studio person. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. But unlike Chris, I'm not a command line guy. I love that warm, fuzzy feeling of my IDE. I do. I just love it. <laughs> Oh, now we now we're good. Um, see, I don't even have a solution here. All right, we're going back to the basics. Let's delete this thing. Get out of here. All right, we're gonna create a new <laughs> ASP.NET application. It's totally happening. I don't care what Luce thinks. Um. And you know what I'm going to do too is I'm going to, for funsies, we are going to move this folder, which is hidden, over here for some reason. Let's close folder. We're going to move it into our C drive GitHub folder because I just like that better. And go from there. Now we're going to create a new web app. And we're going to put it into C drive because I like that better. Because why not? Look at all those hard drives. So many hard drives. <laughs> I can't do it. I want to do it. I want. I want to use it. Um, I use I use VS Code for my website. So for Montemagna.com because I can't do it in Visual Studio because it's like all craziness. So. <laughs> all right. Let's delete this. And we're going to select this folder. Ah, oh. just let's go back here, and we're gonna call this Signal R Chat. Let's put it there. <laughs> I don't care what you think, Luce. Get out of here. Nothing is impossible. Um, I guess we'll configure HTTPS, because why not? That sounds like something I should do. I don't need any configuration, no Docker support. Because in general... I don't know anything about Docker. I don't know the difference between an image and a container. I don't know when I use a Docker file or when I use a Compose file. There's a few. There's a few Donovan tabs that .NET bot is possible. Mm, what is this? Um, I like how then I just installed this and then it gave me a bunch of errors. So that's great. But I am in preview, so that's good. Mm, this looks good. Okay. And oh, there's like a little bit of music. There's like a little bit of chatter in the background. I was like, is someone whispering to me? What is happening? What is what's going on? Oh my goodness. All right, so, oh, perfect. So here, I think we have the same exact application now. So, there we 
there we go. Okay, cool. Nice. I like that it has this privacy thing up top. Fias is the best. It's a it's the ID. It's the ID of champions. Um, and for everybody, you don't even have to be a champion. You could just be to use it. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I've never used this client side library. So right click on the project. I figured we would add a NuGet package to it. I, I don't quite understand what we're doing. But I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing here. Yeah. I'm going to add a, a new client side package. Add? Uh, add a client docker support. Uh, uh, uh. Client side library container orchestration. That sounds great. Ooh, I don't know. What is. Um, this feels very not okay to me. <laughs> uh, ASPNet signal. R. At. I guess I'll do 104. It says I need to choose specific files. This seems very complicated. Can I just add a NuGet package? Files distribution. Browser signal R signal R min. Okay. Hey honker, how's it going? Hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you, honker. I appreciate it. I redid my soundboard. For the last few days, I've been all over it, and I really feel like I've been... It should also read that I crushed it from 2013 to present. really feel like I crushed it. Crush, crush. So, um, yeah, once we get there, we can totally, at any point... Because I'm going to rub a little DevOps on this, and I'm going to make it better. Not yet. We're not ready. We haven't even installed this, <laughs> this location yet. Um, I probably need the maps. Uh, it says I don't need the maps. Uh, Chad. Hey, Chad. How's it going? It says, according to documentation, I do not need the maps. So, uh, this is all super foreign to me. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I have, this says that I am installing the client side library. Um, seems very scary. It says I need to expand. I need signal RJS and MinJS. Do you want me to grab the maps? I can, I can grab the maps if I need to. <laughs> I've, I've DevOps my, my uh, tweet deck. Uh, what do the maps give me? Now, what do maps do? JavaScript maps. JavaScript map files. Source maps. Mm -hmm. mm, this document doesn't help. What do maps do? Um. <laughs> yeah, Donovan's super nice. Oh, they're the source. The, the maps are the source to the compiled. I'll add it for funsies. Hey, Z Jackie. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Oh, it's like a PDB file for JavaScript. Oh, that makes sense. I appreciate the follow. Um, live code in, I got my schedule kind of there. The map file extension is used for various, Frenchie says, uh, types of files, debugging maps. These are typically plain text files that indicate relative offsets of functions. Ooh. Uncompiled quick maps. Wow, interesting. This world of JavaScript, I have no idea what's happening. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. So, lib signal R, we'll install that. that sounds good. 
Oh, because this is gonna run in the browser? I, not on the server. That, okay, so I need to run JavaScript because I'm running it in the, in the browser. I think that is making some sense just in general. Just if I think about it, I guess. We try to be happy people. They they seem to they seem to like us when we're happy. So <laughs> I like people. People are good. All right. So we're gonna create a um. Okay. We're gonna send a. We're gonna create a you know, a hubs folder. We're gonna create a hubs folder. Okay, and then in here, we're gonna create a chat hub. Add new class. I'm way up, I feel blessed. Hey, Matt RV. Thanks for the follow, I appreciate that. Coming in. Shia LaBeouf. Just like Shia LaBeouf. Every time I get a follow, every time I get bits, it just makes me feel great. Cause that day. Today was a good day. <laughs> Although I will say I'm not I'm about to run out of coffee, so that's a bad day. So coffee gone, already two cups down. <laughs> oh man. Let's see what else I got here. Okay, so this is uh, gonna be a hub. How does it know it's a hub? Light bulb? Whoa. What? How does it know? How does it I'm know? I'm way up, I feel blessed. Hmm, hey Chad. Thanks for the follow, I appreciate that. What up, Chad? All day. Okay, so let's just do this. We're gonna paste some code in here. Send a message, receive message, send message. Um, oh, am I able to zoom in on it? Um, how do I make that bigger? Tools. I'm not sure how to zoom in on it. That's my problem. <laughs> um, and no, in Visual Studio for Mac, it's super easy. You can easily do that. Uh, text editor. Hmm. I bet it's like in environment. Let's see. Uh, Visual Studio. Make solution explorer larger. I should really figure this out because I usually don't do it. Fonts and colors. Obviously, it's in fonts and colors. Everybody's favorite dialogue, which causes everything to spin. Um, and I bet it's inside of environment font oh it doesn't let you change it oh automatic Ooh, I'm very worried everything's so big I don't know if that helps at all actually because I don't think you can zoom it just by itself I'm gonna put that feature request in yeah, that's probably fine. Is that a little bit better? I don't know. It's as big as I can get it. Ooh, let me know. Productivity tools extension. Hmm. Let's see. I'm just gonna go with automatic again. It's
It does help. Can I zoom it? We'll just do this together. Why not? Um, is it this one? Productivity power tools. Huh. Align sun? This looks correct. It's created by Microsoft, so you know it's good. Oh, it's downloading so many things. All right, so should just be able to do this. That's the one. I don't know, just install stuff. Why not install it? Show off the power of Visual Studio. This, is a very, this, this song reminds me of uh, like a Toy Story song or something. Let's go to... Um, what are we on right now? Right now we're on. We're on Happy Station. Let's do upbeat. Although I don't know about this initialization of this Vizax. Loose. Loose has led us astray with it. Well, the beautiful part is that I could just open it in VS Code. <laughs> oh, isn't that funny? Boop. So if I look at my hubs here, so it says that I am going to Hmm, I have a hub. And then clients, which comes from the hub caller, apparently. It's gonna send all messages to anybody that's listening. So that's cool, 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 cool. It can be called by any connected client. <clears throat> so let's see what's inside this. There's uh, all, caller, Others, client, clients. <laughs> That's a good workaround. Others. Uh, others in group. Oh, so you can send it to group specifically. It'd be cool to build a chess game with SignalR and see if I could do that. It's doing stuff. I just need to... I think I needed to download all of these things. So. So we can send. What else can we do? get type, send async, send core, send core async. Invokes methods, does not wait for the response. Uh-huh, what's a send do? Invokes a method on connections represented by the client. Oh, what? Um... They look very similar. Hmm, I wonder what the difference is between the two of those, but I guess it's just gonna use send async. So we're gonna send a message when we call into this hub. All right, that sounds good. <clears throat> so we're now gonna go into our startup file. <clears throat> this is for like ASP.NET Core, like all of the Everything is in the startup file. So there's a configuration, there's configured services. So I think by default, it's like, here's the compatibility for MVC that we're adding. If we're in debug mode, then we can uh, do the exceptions, all this stuff here. So we're gonna use signalrchat.hub. So we're just gonna use our own thing. So it's just this chat hub, right? So this is the namespace hubs and then chat hub. Yeah, I agree, Honker. I think that all the productivity stuff just needs to be baked in. I'm going to go yell at the productivity team. Team. Yeah, it's like, why isn't it just in there, I guess, in general? Add, all, add more things. That's what I say. Or if like, you need it, right? It's just there. Okay, so 
we configure this cookie policy. We configure .NET Core 2.1 and add signal R. I don't know why there's a difference between signal R and signal R core. Oh, I see. So the service, dependency service, service builder. It's like literally the same. Maybe they just renamed it. Add signal R services to specified. No configuration. All right, cool. So we've added signal R to it. And then. We have our HTTP redirect, static files, user policy. We're gonna now add .useSignalR, and we're going to create a new routes. And in here, we'll say routes.add, map hub, chat hub to slash chat. So we're gonna set up signal R and we're gonna map this chat hub to slash chat hub. There we go. Um, the main one's ability to increase fonts way easier uh, than VS Mac. The native one does it. Interesting. Well let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yell and be like, hey, I need this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Um, I'm interested just to see how do you, do you know what this the button is to change it loose My my IDE looks similar um, properties of the project so like tools options there's like a productivity thing has said Ronnie we're doing some signal R but we're also trying to figure out how to make Visual Studio a better IDE experience for everybody involved because Lou said that I need to go into productivity tools and she said that I can make things way great I don't know where it's at, Luce. I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, how do I make it bigger? Now Luce is scrambling to figure out how to make things bigger in the thing. Let's see, productivity tools, visual, visual studio product, activity, Power tools, solution, font size. I just Googled it. Oh, I see. Oh, interesting. Quick tasks. Um, text editor, environment. Oh, these, these all seem complicated. How do I do it, Luce? Help me. Only Luce can save us. Only Luce can save us. Um. Hmm. I would think I'd be able to just like command plus, alt plus. I don't even know how you can make the, if I just make this bigger, it makes that bigger. Like 180. I don't believe you, Luce. I think you lied. <laughs> I believe Luce is a liar. Liar. Unless it inserts things into here, that'd be pretty rad. Like solution explorer, like make it bigger. I don't think so. Hmm. 
I'm trying to make the Solution Explorer bigger and I installed productivity tools to do so, so it's easier to see on the chat. That's what I'm attempting to accomplish. I'm trying to make it bigger. Um, Blue says that there's a way to do it, but I don't believe her. Command, power commands. Um, I don't know, Luz, I'm just saying. All right, we're gonna have to VS Code again. Okay, so, holy bananas. So let's go into our pages. And it says that we need to go into our index.cshtml, which is all these banners and stuff today. So let's see what it wants us to do here. Hey, good morning, IoT. All right, so this was like the old page. Now we have some stuff like that. So we have our signal our uh, signal our JavaScript here and our chat over here. Yeah, we're just trying to make this the fonts bigger in here. That's all we're trying to do, and I don't I don't believe it's possible. I don't believe so. But it's okay. We're in here. So this says we're gonna have a new container. Uh, I don't understand this. So we have an input for user, input for message. Uh, this is the user input. This is the message input. There's a button called send button that will send a message. And then a message list, that sounds okay. Holy bananas. People have to write all this JavaScript? Is this what you have to do? This sounds terrible. Uh, so inside of our JavaScript folder, We have site and site min. We're gonna create a new chat.js because this does not exist yet. Chat.js. Hey Tara Jops, how's it going? Looks like you're coding in a nightclub. <laughs> I am always coding in a night. Well, if you want me to go real crazy with it, I could do some EDM mix if that really. Okay, uh-oh. Control shift. Plus. Control shift plus. Uh, I don't know. Nope. That makes this bigger. It doesn't make the solution explorer bigger though. <laughs> nope, not gonna happen. Okay, so we're just gonna randomly shove some JavaScript in here, because why not? Because it told me to. I don't, it seems like that's a lot of work to do. Oh, you know, and um, Emo, what, what you asked me, what does the LinkedIn button do? So now that we have the Emo on here, we can go through and let him know exactly what the LinkedIn button does for this. You ready, Emo? It's happening. This is enough to scare me to go update my LinkedIn profile and look for another job. That's exactly how I feel right now. It's perfect timing for this. What is this? This is like, ugh. What is JavaScript? I don't even know what JavaScript is. Um, let's do a, I'll go back to chill because that's apparently is gonna appease emo instead of doing, doing anything. Oh, this is kind of cool. So. <laughs> I give you permission to give up. I give up. Um, yeah, I don't know what Emo's doing. He's got a cool series all the time doing stuff. Um, what else is happening? Okay, so I see what's happening. We have this send message, receive message. So this will say send message, and this will send this payload, it looks like, coming in. So that's the method that it's going to give it, and it's going to give it some arguments. So this is our main... Um, payload, if you, if you will. So we're going to create a new signal R connection with a chat. And people can follow along at home if you want. I'm just kind of walking through this. Uh, oops. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oops, what am I doing? There we go. 
I don't know anything about signal R, so it's totally happening. And I, I don't know what's happening. And now I'm not even in my IDE, so. But unlike Chris, I'm not a command line guy. I love that warm, fuzzy feeling of my IDE. And now I feel like I'm completely lost. I have no idea what's happening. So we're gonna receive a message. Oh! You're gonna wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Thank you so much, uh, Honker, for the subscription. I appreciate that. Um, really, really appreciate that. Now, I will say this, that as we know um, with this stream, what's really cool about any subs, subscriptions, donations is everything that you donate. One is awesome and fantastic and I really, really super appreciate it. And every single thing that comes into this channel goes directly back into charities. The rest of the year, I'll be donating to Girls Who, um, uh, Girls Who Code. Uh, so all of that money will go there. The best part here is that Microsoft matches all of that that is donated. So by subscribing, you're actually kind of double subscribing in a way because Microsoft gives money back. So any bits, any subs, anything like that, all the money goes back in to charity, which is great. Uh, are you a big fan of JavaScript um, emo? I didn't know because I do need more coffee and I could use probably beers after this. I feel like I'm completely losing my mind. Shia uh, I do understand what's happening here. So we have this JavaScript and we also have this, uh, we have a row, there's gonna be a header here, and then we have this message list and these are ULs. So it'll just be uh, an unordered list, basically, or a, you know, whatever the little ticks are. I wish this was Markdown. Everything should be Markdown, not, not HTML, this is gross. So this is going to connect to it and it has a method called receive. It's going to listen on receive message. And then it's going to call this function. I should do this in TypeScript because it'd be way a thousand times better. I don't know why I'm not doing it in TypeScript. I feel like I need to do that. Maybe I need to refactor and TypeScriptify it. Because this is just gross. Is that what I should do? I should probably be doing that just in general. Because I feel, I feel dirty doing this. In, in it. I wonder if there's anything different. So Node.js, ASP.NET Core, this seems, this seems complicated. Yeah, let's just do the normal one. So this comes in and is beautiful and says that this user sent this message. It's gonna parse out some stuff, apparently, that are oh, illegal things because we're inserting HTML I'm directly. Up, I Whoa, emo, thanks for the sub. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, said Ronnie. Uh, tools, options, environments like it. It doesn't. Um, it does the whole IDE. There's no. There's no. Um, there's no like solution explorer thing. So you can't just go in here and, and change this. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Oh man, TypeScript it. I don't know if I want to. I mean, this is gross, but. Uh. Uh, let's see how far away I am in the in the TypeScript world. Well, I should have started with that. Um, I do have npm installed, so that could work. Mm. Okay, well, let's see. I'm, I want to get something working, but apparently not. So let's go into tools, options. projects and solutions. Mm -hmm. Web jobs path. Select this from the entry, click up arrow, move it up. Okay. Okay. Oh, I got to install Webpack. Oh, I don't understand. No, we're just going to go back to... We were all happy in VS Code a, a second ago, and now I'm no longer happy. We're just going to go with the JavaScript. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. All right, let's finish this puppy up. So I'm inside of my JavaScript file. Chat.js. I think maybe next month I will, or next, next stream, I'll go through and I'll TypeScriptify it and see what's going on. So this is going to add a new li document, set the text content to what we just did, the encoded message, and then grab it and append it. So if I look into my CSHTML, 
which is here. Um, is the code shared using VS feature? Oh, you could use live share, if that's what you're talking about, Visual Studio live share. Yeah, you could do live share between the two IDEs. Yeah, and the code is, is sent across. I don't know how the magical things work on the internet or whatnot, but it, it all works magically. Um, okay, so we're gonna append it, and then we have a start, catch any errors, we're gonna output those to the log, and then we're gonna grab the document outline Listen for click, grab that message, hit send message, or we're gonna invoke send message. Oh, that's really interesting. So, oh, why did that go over there? Yep. There we go. So, if I look at this, um, if I look at this, it's very interesting. So, this, it's, it's like a round trip. It's like this hub just sits in between. So this thing is sending it and then receiving it. And it's like, cool, that sounds good. Back and forth, back and forth. But I'm assuming I can have multiple tabs open inside of here. So it's just listening. This one's sitting, hit, listening for any receive messages. So it's not like talking to the same browser. It's talking through this hub, which is sitting up there. That makes that makes sense. Um, and it should update. Okay. So that looks good. And I should be able to just run the app. Um, okay. Let's see here. All right, it's gonna do some stuff. And let's go into a browser. Over here. And I can say, I should be able to do that. I imagine here if I do this beautiful website. This is these, these are the types of websites that I create, by the way. They look stunning. So if I type James Montemagno, oh, hello world. Ah. Hello, James One. Boop. Mmm. Mmm. So, yeah, that seems <laughs> it is, it is a super pretty website, and of course, not secure at all with the HTTPS. Okay, so we are sending messages back and forth. I like it. it's just the appending. So I think early on, who was it? Um, uh, Wheezy was saying that it's, it's as easy as creating a new WebSocket Go. And this code is pretty easy. So I, I understand the architecture now. There is a, this, we've scaffolded up a chat client inside of our startup project. Let's minimize some of this stuff. So I understand what's happening here. So we have done a few things. We added signal R to the client. So now the website has the signal R client running and it just sits as a middle individual to pub sub messages back and forth to and from the clients that are currently listening. And where it's currently listening is on this slash, slash chat hub. Um, that's where we're mapping the route. <laughs> I should do a CAPTCHA on every single, that'd be another stream. How do you CAPTCHA? Um, so, so all this does, I could, I could say, you know, send message and this could be a receive message. If we want to get crazy, we should be able to do another hub message where I say, um, Typing, and then I could do typing message. I don't even need anything here. So I'm curious, like if 
come into my solution explorer. Look at my JavaScript. So I should be able to do on this connection. Um, receive message, which is what it sends. So typing message. I should be able to do, let's go into our CSHTML again. Let's do a, um, yeah, we can just append on a message called, someone is typing. There we go. Okay. So this is going to take a no, no one because we don't need to. So it's a new function. Someone's typing. And then I should be able to then do Oh, I don't want to put it there. Maybe I'll put a new one here. Let's see. Let's do another row, I guess. And I'll say typing list. Okay. And then in this typing list, uh, can I just clear? Like when I send this, I can say document dot how do I delete uh, remove child any um, so remove all children JavaScript remove all children <laughs> HTTP sadness. Um, how do I remove all children from an UL? Oh, there we go. Oh, while well, I'm using this, oh gosh. Dot empty, removing all LI, empty. You're using jQuery. Um, there we go. Root. Var root equals document dot get element typing list. And then remove all children. And then I can append that child. And whenever I send it, I'll also remove everything because I've sent hit the send button. That's cool. Um, that looks good. And then we're going to append someone is typing. So how do I listen for someone to be typing? Say document dot get element by ID message input add event listener. Holy smokes, how does anyone work like this? Mm, let's see here. So JavaScript. JavaScript input listen to listen to input change. Pure JavaScript. All about that pure JavaScript. That's how I do it. Add listener input function. Oh, that's it? Input. Add event listener. Function. Yeah, I like that. That's easy enough. Coding for fun. Something. Do something here. So if this happens, we want to send a message. So what we're going to do here is connection dot invoke. And we're going to say, definitely catch this exception here. 
and we're going to go into our chat hub and we're going to say typing. So typing. Uh -huh. Oh, even better. Check this out. We could do. Um, no, we'll just start with this. So someone is typing. Does that work? Does it compile? So message input, message input, add event listener, go. Mm, mm, mm. So ideally, this should still be running. This should still be running. Let's refresh these puppies. James one, James two. Nope, that didn't work. Interesting. I wonder if this is getting hit. I assume my event handler did not work. Nope. Okay. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay, so because it's JavaScript, of course mm -hmm. nothing compiles, so you can't know if anything's going wrong. Is there a way to know if my JavaScript Visual Studio, like JavaScript, can you just check to see if these things are valid? I don't understand JavaScript. Like why did why did that compile? It's, it's not even accurate, it's not even correct. I guess that's TypeScript. <laughs> that makes me feel sad. All right, let's see here. Let's go ahead and refresh. Aha, there we go. So now we're typing, now we're typing. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Someone is typing. James one. James two. Ah, sent. Oh, so this doesn't get it. So ideally when someone, when I receive it, I'll clear it too. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> um, wow, that's pretty rad. Um, So when I receive it here, I should also clear it. Can I just make an arbitrary function somewhere? Like, how do I do that? Like, <laughs> not sure. Uh, oh, Chrome Dev Tools, I see, at runtime. Yeah, I guess I could have done that. Yeah, that makes sense. How do I create a function? JavaScript function. All right, how do, I, how do I create a function? Oh, I just create a function, just literally anywhere. Could I just put it anywhere? So you're saying I can do, you're telling me that I can come up here and I can say, I can say function clear typing. You're telling me that I can do this. Oh, to Twitch chat? Whoa, that'd be cool. And then I could actually get real-time update chatting. Whoa, that's a good idea, Jen. You, you I appreciate it. That's a good idea. I like that. So you're saying I can come in and I can be like, put that there. And then what you're telling me is that I can, I'm going to need to probably do this, though, and get this root back because I need to put that there. You're telling me that I can come in and I can now just do clear typing. Holy bananas, I just put a function right there. Uh, and then I should be able to clear it and clear it. Mm. James one, typing. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Oh, bananas. That's cool. <laughs> oh man, that's rad. So I should actually like clear this off at some point too. 
here. I should also clear typing and then I should be able to do like, uh, after I send it, I can do dot value equals that. Does that work? When I click the send button, I want to clear the chat out. So then if we want to get a little fancier, we should be able to take in string user. And then I can say pipe the user into here, send that across to the client. And then here, whenever I get the function of typing message, I'll just say user. And then I can say, is typing. Here, now if I wanted to be really clever, if multiple people are typing, then I would only append some of those things. Oh, I also need to invoke it. So I'm invoking the typing here, but I'm also sending it when I type. So here I need to invoke this uh, connection, but I also need to pass in the user and the user will come from here. There we go. Dot value and I'll say user. I could just have like a very long line of things, like someone entered something. Bup, 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 bup. Cool. Wow, that's really fast. Uh, I guess it's JavaScript, so maybe I could just hit refresh. I don't really know how that works. Let's say James 1, James 2. Ah, doop, 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 doop. Send, I should clear it out. Whoa, cool. This is, this makes me. Today was a good day. Do, 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 do. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Let's commit this to the source code. Let's go ahead and it has all these resource designers. That's weird. Let's go ahead and throw these files. I don't know why it has. Ignore these files. Let's undo those changes. I don't know how those got generated. That's weird. Old school. Time for double espresso shots. Copy, 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 copy. I feel like a web developer. Nothing is impossible. Even me, little old James can be a web developer. Look at that, look at that. Writing JavaScript, I wrote a whole thing. Look at that, that's crazy. Uh, does all these files need to be checked in? Does anyone know, okay, so do I need to, are there ignores that I need to put in here? Like, do I need to ignore this bootstrap folder or jQuery folder? Like, in this lib, do I need to ignore this? stuff. I know I need to add these folders, but like, do I need to add all this jQuery stuff into source code? Specifically these. <laughs> Ooh, Star Wars. Yes, that is a great day. Today was a good day. Star Wars day? Mm, all day. and I just kind of love that. 
There was no need to rub, rub any DevOps on this just yet or anything like that. Um, I'm very confused. Let's see. Do so ASP.NET ignore file git. Let's see here. .NET Core, Project, Artifacts. Mm. I'm a little like, I don't know if it should m -fracture. that's interesting. I'm kind of confused if that stuff needs to be checked in or not. I am. Yeah, you should be. Hopefully, can if everyone can still hear the music. Yeah, I uh, I use uh, pretzel.rocks and uh, to stream, and then slash mots will get you to all the songs that I have listened to in general, just on here. Mostly just pick a station and go for it. Um, but that's the live, you can just kind of follow along. Um, like if I want to switch it up and I'm like, oh man, I really want some sweet hype tracks. Let's hype it up. So I don't think I need, I think I can check in VS Code folder hubs. Um. Do I need to check in lib folder git? What files should be kept? Lib folder and selection for third parties. We have DLLs. We use the following structure in SVN. It applies lib source. Put all of our third party dependencies in a lib folder. We have all third parties in the server that are from reference. I think it would be able to regenerate all of it. What to include? Node modules. Hmm. Well, let me look at my git ignore. I'm kind of curious if I can just copy this. This is probably the correct one. This is probably a really old one. Um, how do I add? Just add that and see what happens. My assumption is that it will tell me what to do. It just feels weird checking in all the jQuery and Bootstrap files. I don't know if that's wrong or not, but it feels wrong. I guess there's not that many, but how big are these? I guess it's pretty small. jQuery. That's pretty big. It's half a meg. I mean... Whoa, one point whatever makes for bootstrap.
All right, so for myself, I always add additional lines to ignore Bower and NPM packages. They're, they're automatically restored, so I see no reason to keep them in the repository. Ah, the libs. Yeah, I feel like that should be there. There's my Donovan folder. Gotta have a Donovan folder. Is there packages.json or something similar? Mm. There's a libman.json. I guess. I guess the biggest thing to do is like commit it and then see what happens if I pull it down into another folder. But. I would imagine that I could. I mean, it has to know. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be able to be fetchable. I mean, it, it cannot be, is my assumption. I mean, it makes sense to my JavaScript, right? My CSS, my development settings. My VS Code settings. <laughs> I assume, I don't know what's even in here. Yeah, that seems fine. So create first signal our web chat client. Whoa. All right, looks good. Uh -huh. Okay. So this should be on my GitHub. Here. There we go. Boop. And you can follow along with that. Nice. Ideally, you should be able to pull this down and just run it. So you get this beautiful SignalR client that I just created. Um, I think that's about it for today. My Saturdays are pretty easy peasy kind of lightweight just kind of chill chillaxing hour and a half two hour day i just like to you know start off my day right me make sure that you know i'm always crushing it it should also read that i crushed it from 2013 to present <sighs> fun coding with everyone i really appreciate it i think that's about it for today uh, who's gonna let's see if anyone's streaming let's go to the twitch.tv and check it out see if there's any raid possibilities happening it should also read that raid. i crushed it from 2013 to present let's see there's me there's some people doing some c plus plus stuff a lot of modeling a lot of interesting stuff going on i don't really know is anyone else i know online hmm Someone's learning Elm, two viewers, that's good. TypeScript plus Phaser. Hmm. Let's see what this person's doing. Let's go check out this dude zooming over here is doing some TypeScript work. Let's go to some modes. Boom. Yeah, thanks everyone for hanging out. I super appreciate it. Uh, it's been super fun just hanging out, me and Mooch. Where's she at? There she is. Uh, appreciate the follow, appreciate the subs, uh, some bits. I'm gonna take this application and my next thing, hopefully is now put it into a mobile app, kind of check it out. Uh, Edo Ho, thank you for the follow, I appreciate that. 
I stream mostly every Friday and Saturday. Uh, you can check me out right here on Twitch.tv. You can follow me in all the places down there on the internet. Uh, super appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into some credits, some rolls. Uh, and thanks everyone for hanging out. Until the next stream, uh, thanks for chilling. Dreams are true, yes you can.